Consider the following argument made by a self-similar triangular creature. They say, we know that if a program does not fail, then it begins and terminates. We also know that our program began and failed. Therefore, we should conclude that our program did not terminate. Is this a valid argument? Is it logically sound? And how can we even figure that out? To investigate arguments, we'll learn about formal implication and along the way learn about modus ponens and modus tollens as two major rules of logical inference. Recall that we said two molecular propositions R and S are equivalent provided they have the exact same truth table. We can now do something weaker. We say that a proposition R formally implies a proposition S provided the truth table of S is true whenever the truth table of R is true. Let's use this definition to formally prove that P and P implies Q formally implies the proposition Q. To do this, we create the truth table with a column for P and a column for Q and four rows for the four possible truth situations of P and Q together. The third column is for the proposition P and P implies Q and the fourth column is for Q. We can fill in the first column's truth table applying the truth tables for AND and conditional. We can also fill in the second column for Q by just replacing the column Q. Notice that these two propositions are not equivalent, they're different in the third row. But to show that the first one formally implies the second one, we only have to look in the places in the first column where the proposition is true. This is just in the first row. Then we look for the second proposition and see that it is also true. Therefore, we have shown that P and P implies Q formally implies the proposition Q. Let's try another one. Let's show that not Q and P implies Q formally implies the proposition not P. Once again, we fill in a truth table, one column for P, one column for Q, and four rows for the truth values that P and Q can take on, a third column for not Q and P implies Q, and the last column for not P. We can fill in the third column just by applying the negation, the and, and the implication truth tables, and we get false, 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 true. To fill in the column for not P, we just negate or take the opposite of the column for P. Once again, these two propositions are not equivalent as we can see in the third row. To show that the first one formally implies the second one, we just look for the rows where the first proposition is true, and in this case that's just in the fourth row. Sure enough, in the same row, the final proposition is also true in this situation. Therefore, not Q and P implies Q formally implies the proposition not P. The two formal implications that we just proved can be called rules of inference, and they are called modus ponens and modus tollens. The first one with P and P implies Q formally implies Q is modus ponens, and the second one with not Q and P implies Q formally implies not P is called modus tollens. Why don't you go ahead and try this yourself? Use an eight row truth table to prove that P implies Q and Q implies R formally implies P implies R. Formal implication and equivalence are related to the conditional and the biconditional connectives. Let's see how by defining something called a tautology. A proposition that is always true is called a tautology, and a proposition that's always false is called a contradiction. Then, the proposition R formally implies the proposition S if the proposition R implies S is a tautology. Similarly, the propositions R and S are equivalent if the biconditional proposition R if and only if S is a tautology. Let's use the theorem to show that P implies Q and Q implies R formally implies the proposition P implies R. To do that we need a truth table with P, Q, and R. This will have eight rows corresponding to the eight different possible truth values that P, Q, and R can take simultaneously. The next column has the proposition P implies Q and Q implies R, which we can fill in using the truth tables for AND and implies. The next column is the proposition P implies R, which is just the conditional between P and R, so it has two places where it's false. The final column is created by connecting the latter two columns with a conditional connective. When we do this, we see that in every single instance, we get a true statement. This means that the final column is a tautology, and that means that the first proposition P implies Q and Q implies R must formally imply P implies R. This rule of logical inference is known as the chain rule. If you'd like to practice using the theorem, try to prove the De Morgan's law, not P or Q is equivalent to not P and not Q, 
by showing that the proposition not P or Q if and only if not P and not Q is a tautology. Let's use our knowledge about formal implication and deduction laws to see if we can find if arguments are valid or if they have flaws. Recall we had an argument from a self-similar triangular creature. We know that if a program does not fail, then it begins and terminates. We also know that our program began and failed. Therefore, we should conclude that our program did not terminate. To determine if this is a valid argument, let's set up some basic propositions. Let's let P be the proposition the program fails, and Q be the proposition the program begins, and R be the proposition that the program terminates. We can then build a truth table for these three basic propositions with their eight rows for the possible truth values of P, Q, and R simultaneously. The very first argument is that not P implies Q and R, and the second premise in the argument is that Q and P. We can fill in the truth table for these two premises in magenta above, and we get the following column in our truth table. The conclusion in the argument is just not R that the program terminates. We can fill in this column in the truth table by negating the R column. Finally, we can use the latter two columns and connect them with a conditional like we did in the theorem. Then we see that we have the following truth table. If you look carefully at this truth table though, you will notice that it is not a tautology, so we must have a problem. So in particular, if we revisit the definition of formal implication, we see that we're really only interested in the rows where the first proposition is true, or the two premises are true. That happens in the first two rows. But notice in the first row of the conclusion of the argument, we have a false statement. That means the first row indicates a place where the argument fails. And this happens when P is true, Q is true, and R is true. In this situation, it is possible that the program begins and terminates, but fails to do what we want. The existence of this row in the truth table indicates that the argument is not valid.